This is the final season three analysis reaction. It ain't even a reaction. This is a review analysis from Mr. Echidna. Until February, it is what it is. Amelia dumps Regulus. I cannot wait until the next episode of ReZero because so far, this season has deeply penetrated my expectations. We have a ton of peak cinema. Penetrated. I'm gonna look forward to and some really good fight scenes that I guess White Fox needed a little more time to finish animating. I just want to make sure everyone is comfortably seated before I say this because some of you might faint or even die. Episode 9 isn't coming out next week. Instead, you're gonna have wah, to wait until wah. February 5th, 2025. Hey, we have an actual date though. Man, I wonder how many normies that didn't realize the scheduling or expecting like episode 9. Some people probably won't even know until like uh, next week and they're like, yo, it's Wednesday. Where's my read zero? It's just like, yeah, about that. Don't worry though. Would you rather have a 12 episodes and nothing? Or do you want eight episodes now, eight episodes in February and potentially even way more episodes, more than 16, both combined of the attack and counter attack arc for the arc six, which is rumored, all right? Ep like, like season three is rumored to have 38 episodes total. Meaning 16 of it, right, is going to be arc 5. Then arc 6 will make up the remaining to make up 38 episodes. Now, these are just rumors, right? It's rumors. I hope it's happening. Ideally, it happens all the way through 2025. Maybe there's going to be like a split and, you know, uh, maybe October 2025, uh, you know, the arc 6 comes out. And that's when the start of, you know, the rest of season 3 is. I'd be down regardless. I know. When I found out about this, I fell to my knees in a Walmart parking lot. But fear not, my brothers. If you want to start reading Volume 19 of the Light Novel, that's right where the anime left off. Anyway, let's talk about the most important scene of the episode. Mm. Subaru without his tracksuit is the best thing I've seen since Priscilla jogging in slow motion. However, I thought it would have been a nice touch. Priscilla jogging in slow motion? The milkers. If Subaru went completely shirtless and maybe took off his pants too. But otherwise, I think my favorite part of the episode was when Reinhardt closes his eyes and says, I've just been blessed. And Subaru's reaction totally validated me. This f That was crazy. He's like, give me a second. Ring, 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 ring. All right. I called up my buddy, Old Lagna. And uh, it's, I got a blessing now. Did he even choose a specific one he wanted? I think he did, right? Because it was like a blessing to appraise shit? This fucking guy literally has dev powers and gives himself new abilities whenever he wants. Regulus really Crazy. is the only other character who even stands a remote chance against him. So that's probably the fight I'm looking forward to the most. Yes. Either that or Wilhelm versus Theresia. Because I gotta say, for a side character, Wilhelm has one of the best storylines I've ever seen. He After does. the whale battle, I thought his arc was basically over. <laughs> I thought he was dead right here. But yeah, Wilhelm like continues to keep like peeking. I, yeah, like I thought his character development is done. But with the realization of the injury from the Grim Reaper's blessing, right? It's just like, oh shit, it's gonna keep going. But no, it just keeps getting better. Putting Priscilla up against Wrath is definitely a good matchup because in episode six, we saw that she wasn't affected by Wrath's authority. I think that was simply because she's so full of herself that not even an authority can interfere with her narcissism. Hmm, her narcissism, her self-centered selfishness doesn't allow her heart to be connected to the masses because they're all peasants narcissism but regardless reinhardt was the and maybe it's that but also the fact that liliana's around and we've seen how liliana can undo the basically like purify cleanse the wrath authority it's a pretty good matchup fear with her narcissism but regardless reinhardt was the only other character to be unaffected by wrath so priscilla is definitely someone special and yep. she made me really jealous when she stepped on al this episode that was crazy the treatment of al heel on his helmet i bet a lot of people were barking for that his stars were wet i gotta say the only that's a light novel reference your stars were bad brother his stars were red. Jealous when she stepped on Al this episode. His stars were wet. I gotta say, the only part of this plan I'm a bit worried about is the lust part. We're sending Garfield and Wilhelm to fight Theresia, Kurgan, mm. all the demi beasts, and, and Capella. Capella. How does that make sense? I thought Ricardo would be joining to fight against Kurgan, and maybe Garfield would take on Capella himself, but this is pretty. Bad. Garfield couldn't beat Kurgan even with Ricardo doing most of the work for him. And although Wilhelm was able to beat Theresia back in 1947 when he was in his prime, he's a lot older now. Will 
and we have an injury that will open up that shoulder right it's pretty much just like the closer you are to the person who has that divine protection that gave you that injury the more it's gonna open up and bleed so he just nerfed against the, you know Teresia. he's old as fuck i Teresia, this is some edo tensei shit from like naruto how strong is she right now is she in her like prime physique wilhelm is like almost at that age where jake paul starts trying to fight you so <laughs> i just thought they could use a bit of backup like what is al doing did we even give him a role even in the new visual everyone's busy fighting and al is just over here yeah you sus motherfucker that's right al really didn't go anywhere i'm like isn't al gonna go with priscilla no al's gonna do his side missions he has his own plans. Who knows what he's doing, but he's doing something. Pondering. Hmm. Anyway, Wilhelm finally revealed the identity of the cultist he was fighting, and it's his wife, Theresia, who's supposed to be dead. Some of you made that connection on your own, but apparently a lot of you got spoiled weeks ago by other ReZero channels because this was technically cut content, but I thought it was pretty clear that the anime was saving it, so I've been waiting weeks to talk about this. First of all, her fight with Wilhelm in episode 4 had a lot of similarities to their sparring match in the past and the mm. way i interpreted it wilhelm is weaker than her but he dedicated his life to studying her movements and learning how to beat her so only because of his love and dedication was he finally able to win so okay. even though he figured out how to beat her she is still stronger than him overall to put it in perspective though the author actually just tweeted that theresia and kurgan are both stronger than the archbishops and that damn what the fuck that's even crazier because of the lack of people going. It's just Garfield and Wilhelm basically going up against three archbishops then. No, not even three. It says that the ability of the witch cult is excluding the archbishop of sin very widely. But the two who joined Pristel were far too strong. The people Wilhelm thinks of are, uh, are the most powerful people in the world. Simply speaking, in terms of fighting power, they are superior to the Sin Archbishops. <laughs> Although the Sin Archbishops are troublesome in their other ways too. But basically you have two... Archbishop tier characters, if not more. And you have just Garfield and Wilhelm going in. Mm, something's off here. Al should be going here. If we have any. Ricardo. Uh, Ricardo, I guess, is going with like Julius somewhere else. But dude, this, this part is very lopsided. We need more people here. That's no joke. Theresia Van Estrella single handedly ended the demi human war with a kill streak of 10,000 people. She would live. Damn. Theresia might be the most racist person in Reezy. <laughs> no, that's not fair. That's not, it's wartime, but, you know, there's a lot of racism going on back then, right? It, even right now, Lugunica, it's, it's not very good, right? It, the, 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 the whole demi-humans and humans, like, ooh, it, it, they do not get along. And Theresa, a kill count, goddamn. Literally go out to battle completely alone and solo an entire army. She an executioner. She crazy. But the white whale took her out. And the reason we can still remember her is simple. That memory erasing mm -hmm. mist isn't the white whale's only attack. It could have literally body slammed her for all yep. we know. I don't know what happened, but Reinhardt inherited the blessing of the Sword Saint, taking it from Theresia during her fight, essentially robbing her of most of her power. The yeah, the interpretation then the reaction was, during the battle against the White Whale, Reinhardt was given, inherited the Sword Saint's blessing, which is so... The timing couldn't have been worse, because Theresia is right now subjugating White Whale, and then most likely that's how she lost, right? Wilhelm... I think mentioned also, like, there's no way, like, my wife could have lost to this whale like this by herself. Like, what happened, right? Well, at that point, did he already not know that the divine protection was inherited? That's kind of an interesting plot hole. Where I remember Wilhelm making a clear, clear comment about, you know, there's something else going on here. The subjugation of the white whale, there must have been something else happening because my wife wouldn't have just lost like this. And I'm sure he already knew at that point back in season one about... Inheritance of the Divine Protection. Something else may be happening, but anyway, that's the timeline. And Heinkel also was the reason why, you know, the kidnapping, timing, you know, felt, and why Wilhelm was separated from Theresia. Blessing of the Sword Saint is basically a massive buff to your natural ability, and it lets you receive direct guidance from the Sword God. For example, Theresia was able to see invisible lines that showed her where to swing, but... Oh, they're a bunch of frauds. <laughs> they're, they're, they're not, they're not, but like... So they got auto assist. They have auto aim assist. They see all the lines. They, they know exactly what to do. <laughs> 
she lost that ability and then got humped by the whale and someone from the witch cult resurrected her corpse as an undead mm. and Necromancy. it seems like the primary suspect is capella i do have a minor capella resurrecting but didn't they say that person's no longer here anymore well, you never know what the identity is. I, I remember Wilhelm making a comment that, like, that person who was able to resurrect is no longer here anymore. Also, yes, I am always down to just blame Pandora when we are uh, out of schizo theories. Complaint about Theresia, though. In the new key visual, she looks identical to the teenage Theresia from Wilhelm. Mm hmm. Her eyes, though, very empty. Just like a doll, right? Necromancy. She's just not there. ...flashbacks, which doesn't make any sense because her death was only 15 years ago, which would make her 46. And this is not she did 46, an age. guys. In fact, she looks so young here, she might have Rudeus's attention, so... Random Bushoka Tensei slander. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't think it's too much of a... Like, I didn't think it was weird because I assumed that by the time of her death, she was pretty much preserved and whatever skill necromancy is used, it doesn't really let her age and it's just like kind of stuck in that form. Uh, that's what I assumed. So I really hope the anime corrects this because not every single female character has to be a young hot waifu. Women can age sometimes. Give me more segments. Unless they're married to Regulus. <laughs> Getting older without his permission? That's a violation of his rights. I wonder if he does some DiCaprio shit. Like, uh, DiCaprio is famously known for having young girlfriends where by the time they turn 25, he drops them and picks a new one. So Regulus, is there an age where it's just not available anymore for him? And he's just like, nope, you are too old, gone. I, I wonder if there's a system like that. Also, why does Regulus not age? That's another very interesting thing, huh? Like, he has remained the same uh, look since the trial times. Many, many hundreds of years ago. What's, what's up with that guy? The contrast between him and Subaru is crazy, though. Regulus doesn't care about names, so he keeps track of his wives with numbers instead. Yet, after Subaru saves Amelia and returns her insignia, mm. her name is the only reward Subaru True. asks for. Regulus is also literally a walking contradiction. Like this episode, he says, Oh, fixating on appearances is the most shallow thing ever. Yeah, that was very, very intentional, that Regulus... He doesn't have any principle stances. He has no convictions. He takes whatever is most convenient to him at that time. And he's just... Regulus. Even though his own definition of love is when a woman's face is cute. Someone raised an interesting point in my comment section last episode, noting that Regulus has all these wives but no children. Almost as if he's collecting wives like... Yeah, they are figurines to him, exactly. Anime figures. And yeah, this is true. Regulus doesn't have sex with his wives. He has no interest in that. And He's a he virgin. does collect people like anime figures. When you buy a figure, you do so under the assumption that it isn't going to change its appearance. If it did, you might ask for a refund. Except in this case, the refund... Yeah, but like, he doesn't even buy them either, right? He takes it by force. Figurine example is very good, but like... He ain't spending money, bro. If it did, you might ask for a refund. Except, in this case, the refund is death because Regulus is so fragile that he interprets literally everything as an attack against him. You can't gain weight, get a haircut, or change your outfit. And you're not allowed to have a difference in opinion because that means you think he's wrong. And that's an insult to his intelligence. That is crazy, man. He, he is so, so insanely selfish, narcissistic, and like... He's so absolute. And being absolute usually is a bad thing. If someone had good intentions and was reasonable and had this kind of mindset, like there could exist like a good version of this guy where it's still very selfish, but at least it's grounded in logic and reasonability and treating people nice. But like, no, not to him. It's just like everything is a violation of his rights. You dare breathe a little fast in my presence. You are violating my rights as a human being. You're taking the oxygen from me. Like anything. Anything. He always ends with violation of my rights. You really just can't do anything except be an anime figure or you die. That's what it's like to marry Regulus. And in the novel here, Amelia actually stood up for herself and filled really? her body with mana in preparation to fight Regulus, but... Yeah, it looked like in the anime that she just kind of gave up. And she was like, oh, I'm sure someone will save me at the right time. The anime made it look like she just closed her eyes and accepted her fate, which I didn't really like. I also thought it was a bit too dark at the end here. Like, you can barely see. Yes, I hate shit like this. This could have been a good thumbnail. Potential. But like, 
God damn, bro. It's, I, the dark lighting, you need to brighten it up and make the colors pop. What the fuck is this dark colors? He Reinhardt and Subaru. Even though there was nothing in the novel that indicated it was... Look at this. Look how bright it is. Bro, give me more of this shit. Also, the wives here is... They're showing so much emotion. What the hell? Yo, these numbered wives. They're, they're having hope. They're not just blank-faced dolls anymore. They look upset. They look defiant. Arms are up. They're inspired. It's looking like all of them wants to, you know, clutch up. Is Super wearing a glove here? I'm not too sure. This, is this a glove or is this the effect of his curse and it's just like his skin is actually way darker than I imagined? It's supposed to be nighttime here. Anyway, next up. I think it is just his hand. I don't think that's a glove at all. Here. Anyway, next episode is a guaranteed banger though because this fight already started. Reinhardt attacked Regulus with the door, so I don't think there's any room left for negotiation. At this moment, I, I, it, was, it was odd how we know that Regulus doesn't have auto deflect on, right? He doesn't have auto shield like uh, accelerator from Twato series. We've seen this time after time where he gets attacked by hits that he didn't expect coming, like Better use using unseen hands for the first time, right? Or Fortuna showing up and just bombing him with like uh, an icicle. Now, it doesn't matter because he doesn't take any damage after that, but his reaction time is pretty slow, huh? Uh, like, I, I don't know, someone like him, but then again, here's the thing. He has no fighting capabilities. If there was no authority, like, probably Otto could win. He can't fight for shit because he gets hard carried by authority. His reaction time here was so fucking slow, I thought that him looking at it would activate, you know, the authority, but nah. Door to the face. I don't think there's any room left for negotiation. Also, I read the novel, so I can just tell you, yeah, Reinhardt vs. Regulus is about to be fucking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Natsuki Schwartz. Natsuki Schwartz. Yeah, this, 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 this art is looking crazy, huh? This art is looking fucking crazy. Damn. The dragon sword is out. What's happening to the dragon sword here, actually? It's looking like Regulus is actually damaging the Ryuken. Look at it. You see his authority. <laughs> if it is something similar to vector control, like, you know, accelerator, look, look at it. The sword is getting destroyed, yet Regulus looks very desperate. He's seething out of his mouth. And then you have Reinhardt. Look at how confident he looks. Look at that aura. It's, this is just fan art, right? This, this is crazy. This is just fan art, right? Like, 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 like I th this isn't real, right? The sword being destroyed? It, it's just fan art. It's just fan art. Okay, okay. <laughs> fan art. Chill. Chill. Fan art. Tell you, yeah, Reinhardt vs. Regulus is about to be fucking crazy. Also, am I just fucking crazy, or is there a little something there between Krush and Subaru this season? I don't know what type of tension Maybe. it is, but I can sense it. Obviously. Every time Krush has Subaru Sama, yeah, I can sense it too. Nothing will ever happen between these two, but I might have to go rewatch my own video. What the, the hell? This whole scene was beautifully animated though. The veins and the shit and the crazy reactions from Subaru, the blood on Felix, the detail, the shape. I love the black red lightning effects. Like, like every, as soon as he always touched like Krush, right? Then boom, you would see this like shock, this reaction of black red lightning and Subaru just in pain. and. It's also crazy how he doesn't second guess or think about this. It's as if this is expected of him. Like, I thought that he might even think and have some monologue. I was like, oh shit, should I do this again? Like, like it, it, it's, it's wild that he just took that curse into his arm. He sacrificed his hand for Krush. And Krush's important character, are we that bonded? Maybe after the Whitewell subjugation? Maybe he feels very pitiful towards Krush of what happened, along with, you know, Rem, because of gluttony. But he didn't even hesitate. He's like, nah, I'll take that shit on my arm and just sacrifice it. Dating. Everything was so... It could be one of those um, irrational impulses that Subaru does, though. Quite often, in Season 2, Season 1, there's moments where Subaru just does some shit out of just impulse, and it drives the plot forward. This, though, he, he, he clearly felt the harm the pain of what it meant to touch her but she he did it again perfect it really made me or is he thinking or or is he thinking that return by death can redo all this no it's not right because i i think all of this is like permanent there is no way any of this shit it gets reverted there's too many significant things that's happened 
with the dragon's curse stuff like like th there is no going back i think this is irreversible point wish that season two looked as good as this but speaking of season two we just found out that Otto recovered roswell's gospel after we burned it and mm -hmm. something about that is still suspicious to me even though Otto's explanation makes perfect sense Auto with Pandora. Honestly, Roswell is a bad guy, so it's a good idea to be wary of him. But then why did Otto have to be so sneaky about it? He's had that book for an entire year and- He never told anybody, because if he did, then Roswell could figure out and, and Otto would be in trouble. I think that's a fair assumption. And didn't tell anyone about it until the witch cult exposed his plans in front of the entire city. Why would he do everything alone in the shadows when he has such trustworthy allies like- well, trustworthy allies, sure, but still being so foolproof where take no chances. You never know what might happen. Something might, you know, slip. Subaru and Garfield. One possible reason is how Otto wasn't mentioned in the Book of Wisdom. That's the craziest shit. Why was he not a variable there? Is Otto actually Pandora, bro? What's going on? Why, 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 why? Why? Because... At that point, we were like, oh, so funny. Otto is such an NPC side character. He's so not important. Wow, he was left out of the prophecy. But it's just like, is it really just that? Or is there something more going on here? Which I always thought was an interesting plot point from season two. If Roswell said to me, hey, Echidna, nice name, by the way. This is the Book of Wisdom. It contains all the knowledge of the future, except it doesn't mention you anywhere. You simply just don't exist. That would make me want to read the shit too. So yeah. maybe Otto has a different motive than the one he gave us, but either way, it doesn't- The motive he gave us was, he's trying to figure out something to do with time lag. So that if we restore the grimoire, then maybe some word will show up here, kind of proving that Roswell had ill intentions. That's what he was kind of talking about in the episode, but who the hell can even restore this? The grimoire, you, is it as simple as just, just going to a bookshop? Just any random bookshop be like, hey, can you fix these burnt pages? I guess so. It's not as as if there's a shop specifically for gospels of the witch cult, so I I guess so. But um, nah, Otto is weird. I'm very suspicious of him. He's he's always been so sus. Where we're memeing about Otto's Pandora. I'm I'm not giving that up. Doesn't seem like he has any bad intentions. A detail I really love is how Subaru is pretty much the only person other than Felt who treats Reinhardt like a regular human. Because mm. of his extreme power, he's used to being seen as nothing more than a hero and a weapon. But Subaru's like, hey dude, feel free to rely on me. And you can see that that really meant a lot to Reinhardt. Yeah. It wasn't the hand. It was people treating him as something other than just a hero. And Reinhardt is so powerful, but the interesting thing about Reinhardt is that, like, his family issues and the way he's perceived, he's got a lot of, like, insecurity. I thought that it was always him being humble whenever he downplayed himself, but his biggest weakness and flaw is, like, is everything but his strength. And having someone like Subaru just call him a friend, and he was, like, one of the first people that we met in episode 2, ReZero, right? We called him a friend. Has some falling out in arc 3, but... It's nice to see that, and it's cool to see someone as OP and broken as Reinhardt has weaknesses that you would never think about. Reinhardt. What an amazing first half of season 3. I think the best episode was practically a tie between episode 7. Capella popping off in the speech, yeah. 7, which was Subaru's epic speech, and episode 5, which yeah. was Capella's introduction. Uh, Capella's introduction went crazy. That episode was actually so, so insane, but the speech episode was great too. Episode 2 was also really, really good, but let's not compare apples to oranges. I actually do have a really big complaint about this season, and oh? this isn't the build-up to some pun or joke. I genuinely feel disappointed that they made this another split core season, because every single time that mm. happens, the hype for the series is decimated when you cut a season mm. split core makes it decimated now a split core is different from like let's say two cores because two core series let's say you have 12 episodes or something then three month wait then another 12 episodes to conclude that season right two cores but a split core is like a single core of this should be 16 episodes yet they split the core so we have half cores happening does it kill the momentum and hype I don't know. I haven't really watched enough like animes that had split core animes that uh, impacted the viewership like that. Also, on the YouTube algorithm side, it's a bit different as you continue to grow an audience bigger and bigger that like later on. 
a split quarter like Razer is going to get more viewership later in February compared to now for me because of nature how the algorithm works and how you continue to build up community audience members and grow and for, so on and so forth but does it really kill the hype I know what definitely kills the hype if you do Netflix releases and drop everything in one go without any marketing like JoJo's Season in half, you cut the hype in half too. Don't underestimate the human capability to forget things. The second True. The monkeys will be monkeys. Everyone's gonna forget everything. They're gonna be confused. All the hype and the momentum and the setup built in this first half may just be discarded by the average person watching it. And yeah, maybe. The second part of the season might not hit as hard as it should now because a lot of people are gonna forget what happened in the first half. And I also just wish they could speed up the production of this anime a little bit too because one season every election cycle is just way too long of a wait. <laughs> but as for the actual episodes themselves, I have no complaints. I think the highlight for me is how beautiful every character looks, especially Anastasia and Felix. And of course, Capella. Capella got the best character animation out of anyone. And yep. just to make your anxiety worse, remember Remember that she could be any one of these characters. Among Us. Among Us. Yeah, true. And any of these characters could also be, you know, Pandora. Never forget that part. I really hope they continue with this art style going forward because eventually I would really love to see my favorite character, Echidna, adapted in this art style. Art style is great. Just make it more brighter, please. I hate the darkness. I hate dark nighttime colors. I can't see shit to see my favorite character, Echidna, adapted in this art style that looks so good. Anyway, I've got to go make a tier list with ReZero at the top, so okay. I'll catch you guys later. Thanks everyone for supporting the return of these ReZero videos, but that's all I got for now. Until next time, keep talking about ReZero. Peace out. Thank you, Mr. Echidna, and congratulations to hitting 300k with the third season of ReZero. I appreciate all the content that you give us that I can just milk and farm on a daily, or sorry, weekly basis. That uh, season two marathon too, that was shit was on a daily basis. Much love to Echidna. Great guy, makes great content. His also seasonal tierless videos, way better in Gigux, if I might say so myself. See you next time. There's a link to the video. Go share his channel. Go like the video.